All right, so here we have, we've just been working on this, a paint out of the Indian Throne Blue Red, which we've been highlighting lately because we recently ground it into dispersion. Uh, and this is making watercolor out of it. And apparently, um, uh, we've got our uh, watercolor expert here, Madeline Harmon. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, and she has done this lovely paint out and we're gonna actually um, do it over again and show you how to do it. Uh, but what we're looking at here is a few different things. Oh, so apparently this pigment is notoriously difficult in watercolor. Um, and it has a color shift apparently when it dries and people don't like that. So we have some tricks of how to fix that. And also we've made gouache as well here. Let's get in close on this. So here on the left is the dispersion. So we're using the liquid uh, pigment dispersion here. And what we're trying to do, and we just highlighted this yesterday, the difference between um, unground pigment, which is over here on the left, and ground pigment. Uh, so of course, once it's properly ground, the color really gets released. You get this clean, beautiful undertone, uh, transparency, all that good stuff. Um, so in watercolor, so something can happen with dry pigments where they get shocked by the binder they're going into and they separate and then grab onto each other and make little clumpies. And that's called flocculation. And that happens a little bit with the Indian throne. It doesn't happen with all pigments in watercolor, but some of them, it does happen. So that, and you can kind of see a little bit of that there. Where's that dried one? We can see more of that here. Yeah, it's really clear on this one. Yeah, there, right there. So that can happen. Um, but over here, we've got, then this is still drying, we just did this. Um, this is a little trick mixing in dextrin, i.e. cornstarch, which helps to, um, bind to the pigment and it helps it introduce um, better into the watercolor medium. And in this case, we're using Aquazol and we will discuss that as well. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then we added the calcium carbonate to make gouache, a little bit there, a little bit more there, and it looks great. It's still drying, um, but it looks fabulous. Okay, all right, Madeline's gonna take it away and show us how she did all this stuff. Go, Madeline. All right. So, let me just oh, here, I'll move this to a away. safe place. So this is Aquazol, our new watercolor binder that I'm very, very excited about. I find that it gives a better undertone on pigments that aren't opaque, like the modern organic pigments, uh, than gum, ar gum arabic does. It's a synthetic, um, so it's basically a polymer, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's resoluble. So it re-wets just like gum arabic does, but it doesn't um, mold on you, which gum arabic can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a great quality. You don't have to store it in the refrigerator or anything. Mm. When I want to use it, I just fill up a container halfway with this dry aquazole. Then I fill it up to the top mm -hmm. with water mm -hmm. and I let it sit overnight. I shake it up a few times. Oh. Right. Uh, and then it's shelf stable. I just keep it in my studio and when I want to make a watercolor or a gouache, cool. I can just pull it off the shelf. I don't have to worry about anything that I'm storing, going moldy. And the ratio you have there is one to one, half aquasol, half uh, water? Yeah, yeah. It's it's not a perfect one to one because, um, you know, there's little air holes, but mm -hmm. pretty much. Okay. And, and, and that makes it kind of this like thick... Yeah, it's like kind of honey cornstarch like. Yeah, yeah cool. Uh, and that's good for making like watercolor pans. Yeah, it's yes. great because you don't have to wait so long for it to evaporate. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you can it. just, when you're making watercolor straight from that in a wet version, you just add water to thin it. It's yeah, that it's simple. Yes, yeah, that simple. All yeah, right, cool. But here at Gara Paint, we don't sell you water if we can help <laughs> that. Um, so yeah, the general basic recipe for making a watercolor would be two parts of this aquazol mixture to one part of the pigment dispersion. Uh, this is a great mixture for any earth pigments, uh, 
the mixed metal oxides. The ones that don't flocculate. Right, exactly. Right. Ultramarines might even be one-to-one -one with, uh, with the Aquasol. Uh, there's, there are organic pigments as well that work well with this combination. Naphthols do pretty well. Pyrols are excellent. Pyrol orange TRP makes an amazing watercolor. Mm. Chromathols, Chromathol 3G, okay. beautiful watercolor without any tweaking or modification. Okay. But really aggressive pigments like heterocyclic anthroponones. They need a little extra. You, you need to give them something extra okay. to grab onto. Okay. They are very, very charged pigments. Okay. Uh, also, quinacridones, uh, perylenes, mm, okay. they're, they need extra love to get the full undertone of the pigment. But I want to show you what that difference looks like. So we're just going to make that regular two to one ratio. I'm just eyeballing this. It doesn't, mm -hmm. you could use a gram scale if you wanted to, but hey, it's not required. Good. And I'm just going to mix them together. And you can see how as soon as I am adding the pigment dispersion to the binder, it's not really like wanting to sit evenly in it. It's making these weird sort of mm, streaky bits, streaky bits. That's it desperately grabbing other pigment particles mm, instead of uh, grabbing onto water or grabbing onto this binder. And let's just paint this out and take a look at what it looks like. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. It looks pretty yeah, good, but yeah, maybe we, we know it can look better with, yeah, because yeah, we've seen our dried sample. And... But maybe it's an effect you want. A lot of people yeah. think about granulation. You could use flocculation for really beautiful textures. True that. In your, uh, in your paintings. Yeah. So if this is look something, again. there's no wrong with painting. You can use whatever you're getting to create effects that could work for you right too so i'm just gonna put some water here and grab it look at how it is so oh, pretty and yeah when you first make these swatches it's also you'll notice it's a little foamy we have we have a way to deal with that as well here called anti-foam yeah, I'm just kind of chemical out. called anti -foam. And it's it's yeah. kind of a tragic thing because you put it down here on the page and it looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous and then there's this big color shift as where, it dries. Yeah. Yeah, you lose all of this vibrancy in your blue. But that's okay. That's okay. We have we, we have, have different around. things you could do. Yep. And this combi basic combination right here, you can make a really nice gouache with it without having to do any extra fussing oh too. right because the gouache we uh Just, the gouache acts as the thing that calms down the pigment and it attaches to the pigment so you don't have to add the dextrin we're about to do exactly yeah. exactly and rinse up here nice fresh start wash sample while we're waiting Nice. Yeah, just while while I'm uh, wiping these off, I just want to mention that Oops, making these drip. watercolors, <laughs> it's great for making final watercolor pieces, but I think it's also really valuable if you're an acrylic painter or a urethane painter and you want to sketch out ideas and be able to move around your color or figure out different color mixtures that you're working with this is something where you can blot it out and move it around a lot more when you're sketching out rough ideas and you're using the exact same pigment dispersions so you know that what you're getting in your watercolor is exactly what you're going to get in your larger piece later on that's one of the benefits of having pigment dispersions that you can walk with work with across different binders mm -hmm. all right Let's try round two. So I have found that 
I get the best results when I combine the dextrin and glycerin with the pigment before I add the binder. Okay. Uh, generally, as a starting place, I recommend that people do two parts of the pigment dispersion to one part each of the vegetable glycerin and the dextrin, mm -hmm. and then four parts of the aquazole. With the Indian Throne, I know that it's really aggressive. I know that it needs a little bit more hand holding than that. So I'm actually gonna do one part glycerin and two parts dextrin to okay. one part of the pigment dispersion. This is vegetable glycerin. I get it next to the Band-Aids in the pharmacy. It's also in the supermarket. You can order it online if you want. And what is the function of that within the paint? It's a humectant mm -hmm. and uh, improves drag. Okay. Let's see. Dextrin. Dextrin, i.e. cornstarch. I.e. cornstarch, yep. also available at your supermarket. Whenever you're working with dry stuff, we recommend that you make paper scoops instead of pouring to minimize airborne issues. Um, cornstarch isn't such a big deal, but this same trick is great for cobalt and cadmiums. Okay. All right, I'm gonna take my handy dandy mixer here. I love that mixer. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, I wish I could remember the origin from. story yeah, of this. It's like but... a handmade little tool. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's got like Staple. a piece of, uh, looks like one of these Deli plastic cooking. lids cut on. I think this was originally a thing. foam brush. Oh, okay. I think this is repurposed from a foam brush. So, yeah, I was shocked with how much dextrin you put in there, but it just sort of melts right in. It just kind of yeah. just goes right in. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we have... Uh, and you've done tons of um, working with this, so you know that it actually does require this much for this particular pigment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the testing process for these, uh, I'll just make swatches uh, each pigment dispersion needs its own balance of uh, additives mm -hmm. and uh, I like I'm very very attached to the way that undertones look when pigments are properly ground so I'm really really motivated to try to get the most that I can out of these colors cool. Um, well now we're gonna have to make recipes for each color. Are you taking know. good notes oh. as you do this? I haven't been. Oh, you I know better. people want me to, <laughs> so I'll try to do my best. But I, it sounds like, too, when people are doing this at home, maybe there's a little bit of difference in how much you need if you're using tapioca starch versus cornstarch or hmm. your brand of vegetable glycerin. There's going to be okay. little variations in the concentration of things. And it's not like there's any ultimate right way. It's just like yeah. slight differences if you add more or less. Yeah. So it's something where it's always good practices when you're making a batch of something to swatch it first. Sure. Whether that's acrylic or whether that is watercolor. Yeah. And yeah, I have particularly with this system where you're know, adding the pigment yourself. Little, you want to swatches. I like to make see my, your daughter, saturation. my daughter made some yeah, of these. these are but, cool. Yeah, you know, you just make these and you can keep them on hand and flip through them mm -hmm. when you're picking out what you want. All right, here we are. And I find what I'm looking for here is that shift from matte to glossy uh, is kind of a little marker that I have the pigment sufficiently incorporated. Now I'm going to collect this into a lump so I can see how much aquasol I want to add So to when it. you first put the powder in, it looked more matte, and then as you worked it, it got went back to glossy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the cornstarch, you yeah. know, the 
the science experiment for kids where you get to squeeze it and it gets more solid and mm. turns more liquid when nobody's touching it. All right, aqua's all, here it is. Um, be careful if you use a jar because it will glue itself shut. Yeah, it's a really strong binder. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good workout. <laughs> Um, so here I am adding. So you're going one to one. Again, one to right? one. Yeah. And actually, I'm also going to follow two excellent tips that I got from customers. One is to add a, a little drop of dispersed water here okay, to just, help it sink into the paper. Dispersed water is a surfactant that we sell separately, but it's also already present in all of the dispersions. Um, it's a, a wetting agent. It helps surround pig pigment particles and helps them separate from each other, and it helps absorption too. So it's great mm -hmm. for staining. You can always um, mix a little bit with water and put it straight onto your paper or canvas surface and th then your um, paint is going to absorb more, even more, into your surface, your substrate. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to add a drop of anti-foam to get rid of those bubbles that we had in the first batch. Okie dokie. This is really potent stuff, so you just use a teensy bit. Mm -hmm. and we'll mix this together, and you'll see how nicely and smoothly it incorporates into the aquasol now as opposed to all that fussing and fighting we had the first time around. Mm. It's really... Yeah, no streaky. Yeah, much happier. Okay. So... Let's take a look at how this came out. Grab some water. Grab some watercolor. And paint it out. There it is. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sitting nicely on the paper. Absorbing right in. Get a little bit of bright smoke. blue velvet color mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Such a beauty. Gorgeous. There it is. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it the same size just for fun. All right. And now, once you've got this mix, well, actually, we said it was easier to, you don't have to go to these lengths if you're making gouache, but. Yeah. You can also just throw some calcium carbonate into this mix too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's all it takes to yeah. make gouache. You just take your your chalk and throw it right in there. Yeah. Mix it up. Yeah. So you could you could take some of this and put it on the side and add some calcium carbonate to it if you want gouache. But maybe you have a failed watercolor batch that didn't come out quite right in the swatch, and you want to make something good of it. <sighs> It's a little bit hard to add in more dextrin and glycerin to get good results after you've already added the aquasol, mm -hmm. but you can make some beautiful velvet gouache with it. Okay. And again, I like to just sort of collect everything in one place so that I can see the volume that's there. It's okay, we have help for you coming. <laughs> I'm going to take some of our extra fine calcium carbonate, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful dry fill that we sell. One of the most versatile ones. You can add it one to one to flat white base to make a beautiful sandable gesso. Mm -hmm. It's also called precipitated chalk. Precipitated chalk. You can make great thick modeling paste style acrylic with it. Yeah, most modeling paste is made out of this stuff. And, uh... Or it has it in there as a the filler, the bulking agent. Yeah, I'm gonna do just about one to one, and I'm gonna add a little bit more pigment to this as well. Let's see. Boop, boop, boop. 
unlike the dextrin, which doesn't whiten uh, the color, this actually does a little bit. Yeah, although it it is going to darken as it dries. Uh, so you definitely want to mix with a dried swatch and not go based off of the wet color here. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, you can see here that lightning effect. Let's remove the paintbrush from the image here. Get a nice thick paste. Painting is always better with paint mixing sound effects. <laughs> Creamy gouache. Mm -hmm. And I've got this color hidden in the pockets here. Try to get it all mixed in even. Alright, so this is a lighter gouache. Why don't we paint this out and then we'll add a little bit more pigment dispersion just so that we can see how yeah, they each look. good, yeah. So pigment dispersions are pretty concentrated, so it's not bad even right out of the gate, but we could get something a little bit deeper, very important if you're doing wash of the night sky. Give it a little jolt there. I said gouache of a nice guy for a minute. And I was like, oh wait, <laughs> night sky. Got it. Could, could, okay. could also be <laughs> gouache a, nice, a nice guy. <laughs> nice blueberry looking kind of guy. Here we go. So you can see a little bit of the chalkiness right now, but that's going to change a little bit as it dries, get a little bit richer. But all in all, it's a nice, smooth, vel velvet drying kind of gouache. Amazing. Nice opacity, even from a transparent pigment. And so cool. We can already see the difference over here where the flocculation is starting to cause color dulling mm -hmm. in this swatch, whereas we have a lot more of the saturation in this swatch. Boy, it doesn't show up as much in the video as it does in real life. I know. Huh? Your eyeballs see it a little better. Well, let's... trust us. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> and let's take one more look at the dried sample. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm reaching. Oh, Let me look at them together. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, we hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for your expertise, Madeline. Oh, I'm glad to talk about it. I know I've been selling, sending people uh, sample sheets. It's nice to have a video where we have the aquasol in action. Totally. All right, thank you so much. We'll see you later. See you later. Bye-bye.